What's up my comic comrades? The first issue of Absolute Batman has finally hit comic shops and as promised, we're gonna break it all down including the origin for this new beast of a Batman. We were actually able to read this issue a couple of weeks early and we've been chomping at the bit to talk to you guys about it, so let's get into it. Absolute Batman is helmed by legendary Batman writer Scott Snyder and artist Nick Dragata and let me tell you guys, this is unlike any Batman we've ever seen before. Which is quite a statement because there have been so many different iterations of the character over the years. So it is quite an accomplishment that Snyder and Dragata found a way to bring us a spin on the Dark Knight that somehow feels fresh. Anyway, the issue starts off with a young Bruce looking at a bat plaque in the Gotham City Zoo. When we see a man, which we could only assume is his teacher, as Bruce is on a class field trip, say, Bruce, there'll be plenty of time for the bats later. Come on, let's start. From here, we get narration as we watch a man drive his motorcycle into Gotham with his narration saying, hello again, Gotham. It's been a long time. So who are you these days? Who have you become while I was gone? You're prettier, I'll give you that. Taller, brighter, but deep down, something's changed. You see this motorcyclist eventually stop and park in front of the Gotham Deli, and as he takes off his helmet, he says, my name is Alfred Pennyworth, and I'm here to do some bad things. Yeah, this is a very different take on Batman's mythology. This is a grisly looking Alfred who, like he said, is back in Gotham to do some bad things. He then makes his way inside the deli and has some small chat with the clerk at the front, who is an old friend of Alfred, and the man gives Alfred a stock of Alfred's favorite tea before we see Pennyworth use a retinal scan to unlock a secret room in the back full of weapons, computers, and even a bed, telling us this is one of Alfred's hideouts when he's in Gotham. Alfred sits down at his desk and calls his daughter Julia, but she doesn't answer, so he leaves her a voicemail letting her know that he's back in Gotham and he would love to see her. After Alfred hangs up, he logs into his computer with a secure connection and gets to work as we realize Alfred is a bounty hunter of sorts. He starts talking to some mystery person on the phone that tells him in the past three months, a gang known as the Party Animals has been sowing chaos, butchering citizens at random, raising the murder rate by 700% almost single-handedly. A daycare was torched yesterday, they danced outside while 32 burned. Alfred says, I read the docket, but you pulled me out of Singapore. I was close to the target. I've been chasing him for five. The person then interrupts saying, you're needed here. Your assignment is strictly surveillance. Gather information on any of the party animals, but do not engage. Also, one note, there might be another player in town. We've only caught glimpses, but he seems to be circling the gang as well. If he gets too close, you have authorization to engage him, referring to Batman. Alfred says, lovely, and hangs up, grabs his gun, and heads back out to hop on his bike, but realizes it's been stolen as he says, Gotham. I hate this town. We are then taken to Croc's gym where we see someone punching a punching bag before someone else says, I think it's my turn. The man turns around and says, oh, hey, Bruce. Sorry, I was just keeping it warm for you. Big day tonight, gotta get in the headspace. It's brutal out there, you know? Bruce replies, don't worry, love's in the air. Now move. And let me tell you this, Bruce is a big boy. He eats his Wheaties. He's like two Batflex. He starts going ham on the punching bag as everyone at the gym watches saying, damn, while Bruce is envisioning the first time he went to the zoo, which we saw on the first page of the comic. We see him talking to his teacher watching the lions while we realize the teacher is also his father. And apparently there was a shooting that day at the zoo. And as Bruce remembers that part, he punches the punching bag so hard it explodes. Waylon AK Killer Croc then says, really? As Bruce says, sorry, Waylon. With Waylon replying, let's make it 90 for the bag, 30 for the sand. So in this universe, Waylon, AKA Killer Croc, is just a big buff gym owner who apparently loves crocodiles and snakes as he's currently holding and petting a crocodile with a snake coiled up around him. But more importantly, he's friends with Bruce and not a crazy humanoid croc supervillain, at least not yet. Bruce even asks, you're really going through with it. Waylon says, yep, I'm thinking of calling the place Waylon Scales of Gotham. Ozzy hooked me up with an exotic pet license, went in with me too. So clearly he has an affinity for the exotic reptilian animals. So much so he had Ozzy give him an exotic pet license, Ozzy being the penguin who we haven't met just yet. Bruce says, Ozzy, he's gonna get busted any day now. So clearly the penguin of this universe still has connections to the underworld. Waylon then asks Bruce if he's coming to poker night as they haven't seen him in the past few months and everyone's in this week. Eddie, Harvey, Oz, and we're even trying to get Selena, but Bruce says he can't make it. Now, what's really interesting to me is Bruce is friends with all the characters that are usually his villains. We literally see a picture of all them together when they were kids telling us they grew up together and still have poker nights in their adulthood. So yeah, this universe is very different. But while we're talking to universes, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Raycon. Ever buy something new and it's busted in a week? The fact is even things that should work without a glitch often don't. And that's even more annoying when it comes to stuff that you use every day. But you know what doesn't make your head nearly explode? 
quote out of Rage, Raycon's best-selling everyday earbuds. For one thing, the everyday earbuds now feature a 32-hour battery life and multi-point connectivity that lets you pair with two devices at once. I'm personally a big fan of podcasts, so the act of noise cancellation built into the everyday earbuds is one of the big reasons I love them so much. They make it possible to get some me time even in a busy office. But here's the thing, with awareness mode, you can still enjoy a podcast while still being able to keep track of what's going on in your surroundings. They also look great and are really comfortable to wear, and they're sweat resistant, so they won't constantly slide out of your ears while you work out. And just when you thought these babies couldn't get sexier, check out this dope Raycon protective case cover. But it also supports wireless charging, so I don't even have to take the protective cover off to get 90 minutes of battery in just 10 minutes of charging. So do yourself a favor and go to buyraycon.com forward slash variant comics today to get 20 to 50% off site wide plus free shipping. That's right. You'll get up to 50% off everything on Raycon's website and free shipping when you go to buyraycon.com forward slash variant comics, but only using our special link. You can thank us later. All right, getting back to absolute Batman, we are then taken to a nice fancy yacht where we meet the leader of the brand new villains, the party animals, the gang of villains that Alfred has been sent to Gotham to stop and or surveil. And we see their leader is crazy. So crazy, he keeps the faces of the gang leaders he's killed like the Maronis and Falcones on display as museum pieces. And he uses them to intimidate the other Maronis and Falcones he's working with before killing them and taking their faces. We then of course see the reason Bruce couldn't make it to poker night with his friends is because it's time to gear up as Batman as we see him put on his cowl with his cape fluttering in the wind. And as he's gearing up, we see news reports saying the question is, who are these monsters, these party animals? Some say kids gone mad, as we learn the party animals had just hacked people apart with machetes. They then say tonight, Mayor Jim Gordon is holding an emergency town hall to discuss what to do about the party animals' reign of terror. That's right, yet again, things are different. Jim Gordon is no longer a lieutenant or commissioner. He is now the mayor of Gotham, and he's addressing the city on how they should deal with these party animals. But the city these people don't care what Jim has to say, as the civilians of Gotham are pissed at the cops because so many people are still dying in the streets as a man yells at the cops, you can't do anything. It's at this point the party animals crash the party with one of them pointing a gun at Jim saying, hi Jimmy, bye Jimmy. He then unleashes fire on Gordon. Barbara then comes over to her dad, who we see is a deputy grabbing his hand, but Jim just says, Barbara, just get everyone out of here now. One of the party animals then says, anyone wants a bag? Tell us about your kids, your sick grandma. We love that. No? All right then, rip them up. But before they could do any more damage, they're ripped out of the doorway from what looks like a spider leg or a tendril of some sort. GCPD from inside says, what the hell was that? And as the door slams, Barbara says, we need to secure the area. Batman then peeks through the door saying, whatever you hear, you don't open this door. We also see on a nearby rooftop, Pennyworth is up there watching the party animals with a sniper rifle in his hand. Someone tells him over the comm, Pennyworth, report, casualty count. Pennyworth says, none. The other player just arrived, referring to Batman. The person tells him if he disrupts the gas, gathering, you engage. Pennyworth says, copy. Outside of the city hall, the party animals get up saying, what happened? As they look up, they see a gigantic humanoid looking bat hanging upside down in front of city hall. So they start firing at it. But as we know, this is Batman. So he drops a smoke bomb down. This blinds them for a moment as he comes swooping down in his beefy mammoth glory. Again, guys, this Batman is a slab of meat. Once Batman lands, he starts whipping the party animals around with his cape, which doesn't act like a normal cape. In fact, it acts more like a symbiote or some kind of tendril hook that he's able to use to grab and throw them around. It's pretty badass. They're like tendril whips. I'm really digging it. Anyway, as Batman is manhandling the party animals, Alfred looks through his scope saying, well, well, look at you go. Whoever you are, you've got flair. I'll give you that. Then someone we could only assume is Alfred's boss asks him over the comms, is the other player disrupting the scene, Pennyworth? Now, Pennyworth knows full well he is, but he just tells his boss, still gathering. He's more than intrigued with this Batman. Alfred's narration continues to say, let's see what you do. All right, big guy, stay Steady, above all, focus. You've been waiting for this, haven't you? You have. You're trained too, mixed martial arts, your own blend, but you're a striker above all, brutal yet precise. You're putting on a show, a leg stomped on so everyone hears the crack, an arm snapped over your knee, sending a message. You're enjoying it too, and the knife work, my lord, you miss each artery by just enough. No fatalities at all, not one. So an idealist, bloody hell. As we're watching Batman tear into the party animal gang with ease, Batman even pulls out his bat ears that are knives and batarangs now to 
hack into his victims. At this point, Batman has soloed around 20 party animal gang members, and he's standing at the top of a staircase. But one party animal says, move. And this is the Andre the Giant of the group who's holding a butcher knife while telling Batman, this has killed more people than you can count. Now I'm gonna give you one chance. Get the hell out of my way. Batman just grabs a handle from his utility belt, then clips it to his bat symbol, ripping it off, revealing his bat symbol is a damn battle axe blade, which is why it's so big and chunky. A lot of people were making fun of this bat symbol, saying it looks dumb, it's too chunky. There was no thought put into its design. But how you feeling now? Cause this is awesome. That's why you always hold your final opinion to you read the book, watch a show, or watch the movie. Then with Batman's first swing, he takes the dude's hand off. Batman says, I hear they could reattach them sometimes. There's a hospital three blocks south of here, or is it east? I can't seem to remember all of a sudden, but I'd run. Essentially pouring salt on an open wound. Then he looks at the rest of the gang saying, I'm going to give you one chance to get the hell out of my way. As he hunches over and spikes start protruding from his back as he literally looks like a bat demon with spikes and a battle axe. This Batman is terrifying. As Pennyworth watches, he says, well done. But if you were a true tactician, you'd have set up traps for those fleeing as he sets off a bomb to stop the party animals from fleeing. Pennyworth's boss then says, what's going on over there? The satellite images make no sense. Whoever the player is, you are to engage. Copy? Alfred says, copy. As he goes down to confront Batman, Alfred then puts a gun to Bruce's head saying that this is the sound of a DC-34 automatic shotgun, son. There are only three of them in the world. It could blow your brains all over the sidewalk before you even blink. But before Alfred could even blink, Batman kicks him right in the chest, grabbing the gun from Alfred saying, sounds dangerous, before he disappears. We are then taken to the next day where we learn that Bruce is a construction worker. That's right, the billionaire playboy is no longer a billionaire playboy. He is just a blue collar 24 year old from Gotham. As Alfred continues to narrate saying, the next day everyone's talking about it. Who is the Batman? Who are you really? Bruce Wayne? You hide your tracks well, but it's easy when you're no one. Just some guy, 24 years old. Mom is a social worker. Dad is a teacher. You grew up in Crime Alley. Friends in low places. A tight group. You're smart. Excelling in school. Your parents have you tested and you score near genius level. Then in fifth grade, you win a student engineering competition, creating a mobile collapsible bridge that could be used to bring to locations hit by catastrophic damage from war and cataclysm. The design is origami-like, based on the anatomy of bat wings, telling us this is what he eventually turned into his cape and why it seems to be alive and move the way it does. And the price is a trophy, a trip for your whole class to go to Gotham Zoo, where it starts. As we learned that day in the zoo, there was a shooting, a shooting in which Bruce's dad was killed. As we see his dad save Bruce and the rest of the class locking them in the bat enclosure. Narration from Alfred continues to say, after that, you lose yourself for a while. As we see Bruce get arrested, lash out, rage at the world. But then you find yourself again. Something inspires you, which of course is a bat. You straighten out. You go back to school and you get a scholarship to the best university in the state. But when you get there, you're injured in the first week, a soft tissue tear. I've seen the x-rays though, and I've been in command of injuries to escape duty, and I suspect that's exactly what you did. But why? You were good enough to be a star, even go pro, because you were saving your body for last night. For all this, whatever it is you've built. You studied applied mechanics, chemistry, criminal psychology, military theory, social culture history, everything to prepare, and then you come home. You set up in Gotham and work in the power grid, then the water department, next sanitation. Essentially, Alfred goes on to find out and tell us that after his dad died, he did what any Batman from any universe would do and hone his mind and body to become a living weapon to protect his city, Gotham. But in this universe, Bruce had to work harder as he didn't have the financial benefits the Bruce Wayne we all know has. This is literally started from the bottom, now I'm here, Batman. But he still doesn't have all the financial resources of the normal prime Earth Batman. And also, one of Bruce's parents is still alive, his mom, who we see waiting for Bruce on her apartment stoop saying, seriously making your poor old mother wait for you out in the cold, hard streets of Gotham? Bruce apologizes saying, sorry mom, I just swung by the zoo, with her saying, forgiven, as he obviously swung by to think about his father. And while this is happening, we see Alfred is tracking and spying on Bruce while he was narrating, giving us his origin. Alfred then pulls out his phone, receiving a text from his daughter, Julia, which says, never contact me again. And he says to himself, I could kill you right here in front of her. It'd be easy. It's what I should do. But you're just a kid, as Bruce walks into the apartment with his mother. I gotta say, it's good to see Bruce with at least one parent alive, especially if you're a Batman fan. But the next night we see Bruce in his Batcave, which is just the top of a building. The top floor is owned by companies and oligarchs who never use them, just hollow investments. So Bruce, knowing this, has fashioned one of the floors into his Batcave. But remember, Alfred is also tracking him down. And when he pulls a gun on Batman, Batman does the same exact thing with the shotgun he took from Alfred earlier on. But Alfred says, give me the gun, kid. You're not a killer. As Batman shoots Alfred with it right in the head before getting on Alfred's motorcycle and driving it out the top of the building window. Captions from 
Alfred say, and then a few things happened very fast. First, I realized he modified my prize shotgun to be non-lethal. Ruined it. So he didn't really kill Alfred, although that would have been nuts. Alfred then thinks to himself, he ruined my gun, stole my motorcycle, and rode it out the top of a building window. Where the hell is he going to land? Alfred continues to think Gotham may not be that bad these days, clearly liking the challenge of the Batman. Then in the epilogue of the book, the last page, Alfred promises his boss he'll get Batman the next time he interferes. We then see two helicopter pilots picking up one of the 30 richest men on the planet, with his alias being Jack Arthur. One of the pilots says, think he'd want to be my rich, generous best friend? The other pilot says, don't do that. Don't joke. He asks why. The pilot responds, you didn't hear? The guy never laughs. Not at anything. Ever. That's why they call him the Joker. As we see this world's Joker enter the helicopter. And with that, the issue ends. But there you have it, friends. Absolute Batman issue one. And this story is off to a fantastic start. This has the potential to be on par or better than Sean Murphy's Batman White Knight. The pure brutality of this Batman alone makes him stand out. But that's just the beginning. The fact that Bruce and Alfred don't know each other, that Alfred is essentially a secret agent who's been tasked to kill Batman, is a stroke of genius. And I absolutely love the childhood friend concept of Bruce having grown up with many of the characters that are typically members of his rogues gallery. It adds a very interesting new angle to his relationship with them. That whole side is also built off the fact that Bruce has no money. He didn't come from the entitled billionaire family. In fact, his mom is still alive. So even though he clearly became Batman after the loss of his father due to crime, he still has his mother there to anchor him and bring him back. And needless to say, there's a lot you could do and play with there. It's just kind of great seeing Bruce as a normal blue collar dude, a Batman not for the people, but of the people. And this Batman is way more of a brawler brute force Batman. Homeboy is only 24 and he's literally a giant. Lastly, we can't forget that tease at the end where Joker is now one of the richest men in the world. On top of that, he's called the Joker because he doesn't laugh. So not only has the Joker flipped roles with Bruce in this universe, he never laughs. Such a cool dynamic. However, it'll be very interesting to see how the Joker will find himself at odds with Batman in this world because all the other Batman villains that have appeared thus far are Bruce's old childhood friends. So what's going to be their dynamic? We're just going to have to wait and see. But you better believe we'll be right back here with issue two when it drops in November. Yes, it's a long time to wait, but thankfully we have absolute Wonder Woman and absolute Superman coming between now and then, and we'll be covering those two. Anyway, we want to know what you guys think of this absolute Batman. Are you digging it? Let us know down in the comments. Other than that, we'll see you next time when we talk about all things comics.